envisage a situation where we don't, we don't trigger Article 50? Well, no one seems in a tearing hurry. Even the most um, enthusiastic ad advocates for Brexit, people like Andrea Leadsom, are not talking about pushing the button. Uh, and you've got to wonder why that is. Um, perhaps it is simply that they didn't expect to find themselves in this situation and are now um, trying to work out what their strategy should be. Um, perhaps, as uh, the elites suggest, uh, Brexiting would be really, really, really bad for the country, and we are now in a world where its advocates are secretly looking for a way out. Um, and it will probably be that sort of thinking uh, that is leading to the sorts of legal challenge that you just mentioned, brought by Mishcons, uh, and indeed uh, there's another challenge in the offing as well. Do you think those have legs, those challenges? I mean, uh, because when the Prime Minister uh, introduce this referendum. He said it was for the nation to decide. Mishkan Dereya and the other challenge is potentially suggesting actually no, that's not the case. That was just um, a suggestion by the public, but it's actually up to our elected representatives to decide. Well, we could have had, couldn't we, uh, a mandatory referendum where the result of the referendum would bind Parliament and cause Parliament immediately to push the Article 50 button. Article 50 is the mechanism whereby you leave the UK. Um, we didn't have that, so Parliament didn't want us to have that sort of automatic feature. Now, obviously, democracy is right at the heart of this debate. The people have spoken and the people have said uh, at the moment that it is their desire that we leave the EU. And there is no parliamentarian in the country that's going to um, have anything other than profound regard to the result of the referendum. But um, uh, if you ask the question, well, who ultimately uh, uh, should decide when we come to press the button, which might be uh, a year, might be even more than that down the road, um, parliamentarians will have regard to what then, it seems to me at least, uh, the public seems to want. It will have regard to what's happened uh, to the economy in the country, to jobs in the country since the result of the referendum became, name, uh, became known. Uh, politicians will have regard to what their constituents are telling them. And that's absolutely as it should be. Uh, we live in a parliamentary democracy and it's vital that Parliament, not a Prime Minister who is unelected, uh, gets to make the decision. But of course, uh, the result of the referendum is absolutely critical. OK, so in your considered opinion, is there a case uh, that Mishkan Dereya has brought? Do they have a case against the UK Parliament, if you will? Well, Mishkons haven't yet brought their case, uh, and uh, we expect uh, I'm leading a, a, a separate challenge to uh, uh, bring a, 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 a case also. And, um, of course, uh, we'll wait to hear what the team of uh, three or four silks and four juniors tell me later on this evening when I meet with them. But if their advice is that uh, there is uh, an argument that uh, because leaving the EU involves in effect stripping um, the European Communities Act of all of its power, that needs to be done by another Act of Parliament rather than by some magic wand uh, waved by the Prime Minister, uh, then we will certainly be pursuing that action. And, you know, profoundly uh, important, respected public law lawyers are divided on it. We just don't know. What would be terrible would be for the Prime Minister to uh, purport to press the Article 50 button to say we are leaving uh, and for it then to be said that in fact his act or her act, that uh, would be nice to have another woman Prime Minister, uh, 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 was invalid and in that world we might even have to ask the, the Luxembourg court uh, whether the requirements of Article 50 had been satisfied. That would be in nobody's interests. It must be for our domestic courts to decide uh, and hopefully they will give the job of deciding then um, to a democratically elected parliament. So, so just uh, tell us uh, as much as you can, what is the case that you may bring? Well, we're looking at a number of angles. We're looking at this question about um, whether what lawyers call the crown prerogative, which is the little bits of parliament that the monarch used to have that now reside in the um, prime minister are sufficient to enable the prime minister to press the button without sanction, uh, without the authority of parliament. We're looking at whether any uh, election offences have been committed around overspending. We're looking at whether um, some of the statements that were made by uh, Brexiters around uh, 
immigration or around 350 million pounds being available to spend or about increased spending on the NHS um, are inaccurate and if they are inaccurate whether they give rise to uh, the possibility of another challenge. We're looking at uh, what uh, happens to UK citizens uh, who've been resident uh, abroad for more than 15 years who aren't allowed to vote and we're also looking at uh, the situation of our British overseas territories uh, and our Crown dependencies, the, the Channel Islands, uh, uh, who uh, uh, won't have had the same chance to participate in the referendum as uh, those residents in the UK have. And we're also looking, of course, at the position of Scotland and Wales and Ireland, whose uh, 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 independence, whose ability to act as members of the United Kingdom will be profoundly impacted uh, by uh, this result and by a decision to leave. Uh, of course in Scotland there was an overwhelming vote for Remain and that was true in Northern Ireland as well and I know that a number of parliamentarians in those uh, uh, home nations are asking the question whether they can uh, uh, block an exit vote. Great to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. Great pleasure. Thank you for having me on.